What is up, everybody? Dan Dan the Fireman here. Welcome to the Smart Rider Basic Training eCourse Class 2201. We're going to be going over everything you need to know to plan your ride, what kind of motorcycles are out there, and what kind of gear you should be getting. And we're going to be posting a video every single Saturday from the course. Now, here's the thing. If you want to get the course all right now, it only costs you $4.99 the first month, $9.99 after that, and you're going to get all the PDFs, all the eBooks, and everything, like I said, right now. But if not, I'll be seeing you every Saturday. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Welcome, rookies. Take a seat. Grab a donut. We're going to jump right into this, and we're going to be talking about why being a smart rider matters, because that's what we're talking about here right? Smart rider basic training. So why being a smart rider matters. That's me on the CBR having a lot of fun. Here's the other CBR. But a smart rider is someone who seeks, recognizes, and understands hazardous situations. That's the fundamental skill of actually paying attention. A lot, not very common. Not a lot of people do it, but we're going to be talking about that. Also maintaining your fundamental motorcycle riding skills. That's going to be your swerving, braking. That's going to be your tight turns, U-turns, figure eights, understanding how to shift, clutch, all that fun stuff, primary, secondary controls. We're going to be talking about that too. So acquires and uses personal protective equipment. Now, as a firefighter, we had to wear full gear going into the house on fire. And same thing on EMS calls, making sure we got our gloves and everything. As you notice here that I'm wearing full gear. Okay, we're going to talk about from head to tippy toe what you need to be wearing. Rescues injured motorcyclists with medical training. I took that from the fire service. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And what you do with this is that you help out an injured rider. Okay, we're going to try to prevent everything we possibly can. But if something happens, let's go ahead and keep our friends riding. All right. So teaches and mentors other motorcycle riders. If you can teach something, that means you learned it multiple ways. It means that you're a better, smarter rider yourself. That's why I add that in there, okay? So being a smart rider matters because it's in the best interest of you and everyone around you to ride intelligently. Now, you can read all this right here. But the main thing here is that if you're just going out riding and not paying attention, don't really care, just think it's like a bicycle, having a good time, don't really worry about the rules, don't really worry about the laws, any of the dangers that are associated with any of this stuff, you're not really paying attention. You're, you're putting yourself at a massive risk. You're going to get injured. You're going to crash someday. You're going you're gonna to find out that there's going to be something out there that's going to get you, and you had no clue what it was until after the fact. So we need to be paying attention, riding intelligently. We have friends and family that want us to get home, okay? So like I said, a culture of safety matters, and Dan and the fireman, firefighter and everything, as you can tell. You know, I'm wearing the Maltese cross, the flooring cross, whatever it is you want to call it. Uh, I was a firefighter for 11 years. I saw a lot of motorcycle crashes, a lot of motorcycle fatalities, a lot of car crashes, a lot of things that could have been prevented just by paying attention. And that's how I started the S portion of SMART and realized, you know, as a firefighter, you got to constantly practice, maintain your fundamental skills, got to wear personal protective equipment, I'm used to doing that, rescuing other riders while well, rescuing my buddy just in case he went down in a fire or something happened to him at the station or on a call, got to make sure I take care of them too, teaching and mentoring. We had a bunch of rookies. We had a bunch of rookies, probationary firefighters that would come in, and I was the senior firefighter. I'd have to go teach them everything. So it allowed me to keep my skills up while teaching them. So it was really cool. It was really cool. So we're going to be doing a lot of that here. So a culture of safety prioritizes the life you have outside of motorcycling over sloppy habits and cheap thrills. Just like I said, if you're not paying attention, you're just going to go up there in the mountain, go crazy, roll off the side of the mountain because you weren't paying attention to how fast you were going. Cheap, real sloppy habits cost you your life, cost you maybe a leg, arm, traumatic brain injury, all these different things. See it all the time in the news. Motorcycle fatality, intersection. Motorcycle fatality, couldn't navigate a corner. Motorcycle fatality got sideswiped because they, you know, who knows? could been paying attention or just actually got sideswiped. And we talk about that with inattentional blindness. But anyways, I don't want you guys to get into a crash. Okay, you rookies here need to be paying attention because I don't want you guys getting hurt. I don't want to see you in an obituary in the news or nothing. Okay? So here we go. So some parts of this academy will be kind of freaky. Okay, we talk about crashes. We talk about the reality of things. And in order to be a smart rider, you actually have to understand the consequences of not being a smart rider. That's what we're gonna be talking about here. So you ready to get started, though? I hope so. All right, we're gonna be talking about some materials and equipment that you are going to need. Stuff that I recommend. So with anything, it's not just online. You have to actually go out there and practice. Okay. So here we go two-wheeled motorcycle or scooter, and what I didn't write up there because we are focusing on motorcycles is you can do everything here on a bicycle, except for shifting, clutch, primary, all the electronic stuff, whatever, but still can practice the tight turns, U-turns. You can even do figure eights. You can do swerves, braking. You can understand counterbalance. You can understand head and eyes and everything. 
You could be a smart bicycle rider. You can be a smart scooter rider. You can be a smart skateboarder, smart dog walker, whatever it is. Situational awareness, all that stuff, the principles apply to all of it. Cones and markings, we're going to be doing a lot of fun things out in the parking lot. We need about a 40 by 60 area. So that's going to be a typical American parking lot. You're going to find that, and I'm going to show you how to do that later on. But having some cones is very important because you're going to be doing some cool things within a nice little diagram, okay? There it is, 40 by 60. You could do it 20 by 50, especially if you're doing it in a, on a bicycle. And a 20-foot width is typically like a, a neighborhood road. So if you can have that, at least 50 feet, and we can play around with that, modulate things. But I truly recommend 40 by 60, especially if you're going to do it on a motorcycle. Timing device, you know, maybe a stopwatch, maybe your phone, hit the timers. Uh, you don't have to. It's just something I like to do. More information, the more ways I can trend if I'm doing better or worse. So you might want to check into that, but you don't need it. It's not absolutely needed, but what I want you guys to be having is protective gear. So I'm going to require you guys to at least wear a DOT motorcycle helmet if you're in the United States. Anywhere else, uh, wear what the government is the bare minimum for, for you in your area, the law. I know in Arizona, you don't need to wear a helmet or anything, but here's the thing. Wear it, okay? You're not being a smart rider if you don't. CE rated motorcycle gloves. If you fall or anything like that, you're going to put your hands down. You don't want to scrape up your hands. So wear some protective gloves, okay? So uh, long sleeve shirt, long pants, closed toed shoes. Those are the bare minimum. We're going to be doing a lot of parking lot stuff. We're not going to do anything crazy in this series and in this course. So we're not going to be riding on the road doing some nasty stuff. The long sleeve shirt, long pants, closed toed shoes. I don't want you ripping your toes off. Don't wear sandals. Wear long pants, long uh, shirt. Hopefully it will give you half a second of abrasion resistance. But here's what I recommend. And this is what's going to help you out even more. So DOT ECE rated motorcycle full face helmet. Now you notice at the top says DOT. Well, you can have a half helmet DOT. I recommend a full face. And I say ECE because that's the European version of the standard. And I actually like it a little bit better than DOT. So you can find an ECE. Great. Uh, if you can't, at least get a DOT. CE rated motorcycle gloves, pants, jackets, boots, all that stuff. You're going to have that abrasion resistance, impact protection, everything you need. And plus, you're practicing like you're going to play. So if you go out riding in town, why aren't we practicing with full gear? Don't get into the bad habit of not wearing gear. Now that you know what it is that you need to start this course, let's go ahead and jump into Unit 1, Lesson 1 next week. But like I said, if you want to have it now, click the link in the description and join up.